the first thing when I saw that the radiation dropped to zero on the one side of the moon was say, hello, man, we can go to the Europa moon and search for life. In the basement here under DTU, we conduct some of the experiments, uh, experiments that we can do with our uh, cameras before they go into space. The Juno instruments were actually calibrated here a long time ago. One of the things that really came as a surprise to everybody is that when we passed the moon of Europa, we actually flew uh, just past it and found that the radiation unexpectedly died away and, be, and uh, dropped almost to zero. This is a big surprise because all models show that it should be bathed in a, a hard radiation or from, from all sides. Now we have a moon with twice as much possibility for life namely Europa. There's water twice as much as, as Earth. We have all the salt you need from the, from the rocky core and there's energy from the massaging of the planet, so uh, of the moon. So that means that if there was a potential for life existing today in the solar system, Europa will be my first choice of going there. On board the Juno spacecraft, our cameras are sitting, they are located out here. Their main purpose is to measure the bending of the structure so that we know exactly where uh, Juno and our instruments are pointing, so we can make the best ever uh, magnetic map of, the, of this planet. But the cameras can also detect radiation. We are presently building the technology that is going to, to go up there, because we have to have it ready once the mission is ready for flying. So it's going to be the coming engineers uh, uh, stu studying space uh, technology here at DTU and elsewhere, obviously, uh, that is going to, uh, to build the instruments that are going up there for the lander.